Hello everyone and welcome back for the fourth installment in the Missing Minifigure series. We are here today with part two of our Marvel Cinematic Universe list, where we are examining which characters from this epic saga are still waiting on their own minifigure representation. If you haven't watched part one yet, be sure to go to last week's video and check it out so you know which characters we have already covered. Please like and subscribe below if you enjoy this content, guys. I would greatly appreciate it. Only about 10% of you watching this video right now are subscribed, so that would be really appreciated on my part. A couple of ground rules before we get into it. First and foremost, we are only going to be discussing characters which have no minifigure representation whatsoever. We are not going to be pointing out missing variants of pre-existing minifigures, although I do think that could be a compelling subject for a future video. Second, we're going to present characters mostly in their order of appearance in the MCU by real-world release date as opposed to chronological order. There are some characters that I personally want to see more than others, but this list isn't presented in any sort of countdown or any kind of ranked order. It's mostly by their appearances within the MCU as the films were released to us. Make sure all of you let me know in the comments below which minifigures that you want to see LEGO make that they are still holding out on from the MCU. There's definitely a bunch that I haven't covered and maybe some that you agree with me on that I've already mentioned in this video or the prior video. But please let me know in the comments below which ones you want to see because I'm definitely interested to find out which ones I missed and which ones you guys are into. With dozens of projects to choose from, there is certainly still a solid contingent of side and in some cases main characters waiting to be immortalized by Lego. All that said, let's jump into the list part two. To kick things off here, we have Emil Blonsky slash Abomination. Tim Roth brings some pretty wild energy to this character and the blood-hungry former special ops agent tasked with tracking and subduing the Hulk himself. Through a little one-two combo of bastardized super soldier serum and some concentrated gamma blood, Blonsky becomes the Abomination, a Hulk rivaling super being that epitomizes the inner nature of Blonsky himself. With the release of She-Hulk on Disney+, Plus, we learn that Blonsky slash Abomination is still hanging around the MCU some 15 years after the Incredible Hulk originally released. Most fans had forgotten about the character entirely, and given that the aforementioned film is hardly even considered a part of the wider MCU, now that Mark Ruffalo has taken on the titular role, this resurfacing tells me that it's time we finally get a Blonsky minifigure and an abomination big fig while we're at it. Why not? Next up is Dr. Abraham Erskine. Beloved character actor Stanley Tucci fills a crucial role as Dr. Abraham Erskine, the originator of the super soldier serum in Captain America the First Avenger. The serum was first used on Red Skull and later refined for Steve Rogers, and its formula would be bastardized countless times in the future as others attempted to replicate Erskine's work. Erskine is to Steve Rogers what Ho Yinsen was to Tony Stark, a wise and compassionate mentor able to see and express belief in the good nature of these characters. Erskine propels Steve into his role as Captain America, not just physically with the serum, but mentally as well. His role is critical to the eventual arc of all of the MCU events, and as such, he deserves a minifigure. It's been plenty of time since that movie came out. Let's go ahead and do it. Next up, we have Jasper Sitwell. In A World as Alien as the Marvel Cinematic Universe, it's important to have characters in opposition to our heroes that are strictly human. Sometimes this comes in the form of villains, occasionally it's citizens or governments concerned with the supernatural actions of our heroes, and occasionally they are both. Jasper Sitwell falls into this category as a government representative working undercover for HYDRA. Now it's easy for us to label HYDRA as an evil organization when they have a quintessentially evil leader in Red Skull, but it's characters like Sitwell and Rumlow and Alexander Pierce that humanize the actual political beliefs of the group. We've gotten a Pierce and Crossbones minifigure already, and given his multiple film appearances, I think it's appropriate for a Sitwell minifigure to exist also. It would be fun to get some like executive kind of boots on the ground, agents from Hydra, and Sitwell's the primary character that could give us that. Next up on the list is Kraglin. Ancillary character to the Guardians of the Galaxy, Kraglin has now appeared in five different MCU films, including all three Guardians films, Avengers Endgame, and Thor Love and Thunder. Kraglin has a strong side role in both the second and third Guardians films, and a Guardians 3 post credit stinger would seem to imply his centrality to the Guardians team moving forward. Portrayed by Guardians creator James Gunn's brother Sean, 
Craglin plays for both comedic and heartfelt moments across his appearances, very much with the overall tone of the films themselves. Assuming that he continues to exist in this universe, we will almost definitely get a Craglin minifigure at some point in time. Next up, we have Korath. Now, Korath is not often spoken about or considered to be among the more important characters in the franchise, but he has appeared as Ronan the Accuser's muscle across multiple MCU projects over a number of years. Now, this is light work for an actor of Jean Moon Hounsou's ability. Korath doesn't really get to talk very often in his Guardians of the Galaxy and Captain Marvel appearances, which is a bit unfortunate, but that 19-year stretch implies a continuity and centrality to Ronan's journey and ultimately ties him into our hero's journey for the Infinity Stones. Although a subdued side character, I'd have thought we would have seen a Korath minifigure by now, and I'm afraid it's probably unlikely to happen at this point unless he appears in a future project. Now we're going to look at Dr. Christine Palmer, undercut by the quality of writing and the character's motivational placement within the Doctor Strange films, Rachel McAdams is lovely as ever in her multiple appearances as Stephen Strange's love interest. It's a bit unfortunate that her character almost solely exists to create motivational push or strife within Strange, but McAdams does get to cook a few times on screen in her derision of Strange. I wish that they had given her character a bit more volume, but nonetheless, she's still an essential element in the origins of Doctor Strange, and her reappearance in the Multiverse of Madness only accentuates her absence as a Lego minifigure. Next up, we have Stakar O'Gord. The Guardians universe is no stranger to a bad boy with a conscience, and Sly Stallone's Stakar O'Gord is among them. Leader of his own band of Ravagers and bound by the code, Stakar's presence in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 is both jarring and comfortable at the same time. It's so obviously Stallone in the role, which for some can take them out of a film but it's also much easier to place such an oddly distinct character within the Guardians universe of Misfits as opposed to some of the other more straight-laced Marvel projects. I think we got just the right amount of screen time for Stakar, but he's still a welcome presence in the MCU for me. Let's get old Sly his minifigure already, because we know that we're never going to get a Rambo or a Rocky minifigure. On second thought, let's actually get some Rocky minifigures. I'm going to need Apollo and Drago stat. Next up, we're looking at Flash Thompson, classmate to Peter Parker, a.k.a. Spider-Man. Flash Thompson has now appeared with a fair bit of on-screen time in each of the three standalone Spider-Man films in the MCU. There's a few other side characters that appear in all three films and probably deserve spots as well, but I chose Flash for this list because he feels like the most memorable and impactful character to me. In the vein of what I mentioned prior about Jasper Sitwell, Flash provides a very human foil to our hero characters that has no supernatural ability or implications. He exists on a much smaller scale, but his existence as a bully to Peter emphasizes the small-scale nature of Spider-Man's character's core. He's supposed to be our friendly neighborhood Spider-Man, but unfortunately, the MCU tends to lose the neighborhood aspect of the character when they entrench him in intergalactic supernatural phenomena. Flash Thompson is one of the characters essential in grounding him to the neighborhood and thus deserves his own minifigure. Marvel has definitely been successful in the standalone Spider-Man films with making the stakes feel a bit smaller, and I appreciate that they did that. Next up, we have Scourge. If you are anything like me, Thor Ragnarok is among your favorite MCU films. It's a blast and brings a very fun twist to a character that allowed Chris Hemsworth plenty of space to cook in a new tenor from the previous films. In a film full of comedic presence and moments, Scourge provides some of the best right from the start of the film. I think a lot of fans really appreciated the tone of Ragnarok and then Taika YTT, the director, took it a step too far in Thor 4, really putting everything up to 11, but he hit just the right tone in Ragnarok and I really loved it. We have gotten other new characters from this movie like Hela and Grandmaster and Valkyrie, but Scourge unfortunately remains off the list. Carl Urban is a great character actor that has featured in plenty of beloved franchise content, and he deserves this minifigure to put next to his Aomer. Next up, looking at Yon Rog. I have said it before on the channel, but I consider Captain Marvel to be one of the more unfairly maligned films among the Marvel catalog. It certainly is far from perfect, but the buddy cop chemistry, the 90s charm, and the talented cast make for a pretty fun film to me. Carol's personal journey of discovery and her triumph over Yon Rog are genuinely compelling, and I'll never say no to some Jude Law on screen. 
This is not among my most favorite roles of his, but he does play the overconfident, insecure, self-satisfying Jan Rog with a plume. He should get a minifigure for this. Next up, we're looking at Valentina Allegra de Fontaine, first appearing in the post credits of Black Widow. Contessa Valentina Allegra de Fontaine is the director of the CIA and a recruiter of bygone hero figures with morality complexes. She appears in multiple episodes of the Disney Plus series The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and she plays a truly supporting role in Black Panther Wakanda Forever. It's presumed that she will also appear in the Thunderbolts film, and so I can only assume that her sustained presence in the MCU will at some point warrant a minifigure representation. I don't think Julia Louis-Dreyfus would say no to getting a second minifigure to place alongside her Elaine Bennis likeness from Seinfeld. Now we're going to take a look at Mobius. I've got multiple characters from the Loki Disney Plus series in my chamber here, and I'd be lying if I said I wasn't biased about it. I'm sure there are characters to this point that I've still overlooked. Some of you have been shouting at the screen for me to acknowledge, but I'm going to rip off three straight Loki ones, and we are starting with the character who gets the most screen time in Mobius. Owen Wilson was an absolute revelation to me as this character. He had an excellent chemistry with co-star Tom Hiddleston. They're both cerebral, chatty Cathy's looking to one-up another at every opportunity. They have a real Tom and Jerry sort of vibe going on, and it's a very fun time. They have a dynamic that is both fun and at times deeply emotional. Mobius has one of the most compelling story arcs among any character in the MCU for me, and I can't believe that they didn't release him in the last Marvel CMF series. I created a mock of Obi's workshop in Season 2 of Loki, and I pieced together my own Mobius figure from pre-existing Lego parts, which you can see here. I think I've done a pretty good job. I went more with the Season 1 hairstyle as opposed to Season 2 because I think it fits Owen Wilson a little better and is more immediately identifiable as this character, but this face piece works really well, and overall I was quite pleased with how it came out. Next up from Loki, we have He Who Remains slash Kang. Second on my list of Loki characters is Kang, specifically for me, the variant of He Who Remains. We won't be seeing any more Jonathan Majors in the MCU, and that's for good reason, but his portrayal was undoubtedly compelling in the season finale of Loki, the first one. Where viewers had become accustomed to large-scale CGI-laden climactic battles, Loki's finale was a battle of wits, a discussion that ended in a solemn place far removed from the usual uplifting Marvel fair. I won't be surprised if Disney and Lego choose not to pursue this character in the future, but I also think it would be cool if we got both a He Who Remains and a Victor Timely minifigure. We may not want to celebrate the actor, but there are writers, costume designers, and other crew that brought this character to life, and they deserve to be rewarded for their work, so I would like to see a He Who Remains minifigure. Finally, I absolutely had to put Ouroboros on the list, from Loki Season 2. Played by the endlessly charismatic Kiwi Kwan, OB was instantly entrenched as a fan favorite for his curious demeanor and conversational shenanigans. He's a compelling ally to Loki and Mobius, and he inserts the proper tenor of comedic relief without OB himself realizing the comedy of his actions, which makes everything a lot funnier. His workshop is a piece of set design mastery. It's instantly recognizable as its own distinct location within the MCU, and it has a curious and disorganized contrast to the infinite monotony of the rest of the Time Variant's authority. I made my own mock of OB's workshop a while back, and with it combined some pre-existing parts to make my own Ouroboros minifigure. It could definitely do with some more proper printing on the jumpsuit, get that green color in there, but I think it's a good approximation of what OB would look like, and I do hope we see him as a real minifigure in the future. Last but not least on this list is a character that I am not super familiar with, and that's Daredevil aka Matthew Murdock. We did in fact get a Daredevil minifigure with his inclusion in set 76178, The Daily Bugle, but it doesn't appear to me as though this character is based on the Charlie Cox version. Regardless, even though the Netflix Daredevil series is technically considered MCU canon, we've yet to see the character don the costume in the MCU proper. He is slated to get his own Disney Plus series, Daredevil Born Again, after appearing in Spider-Man No Way Home, She-Hulk, and Echo. Of all the names on this list, this to me is the most slam dunk inclusion for future releases. That's going to be it for today, everyone. Make sure y'all let me know in the comments below which minifigures that you think I've overlooked or which ones that I mentioned that you thoroughly agree with. Even though we have done two videos on the MCU now, there are still definitely plenty of characters that I have not gotten around to mentioning. 
You could even do a part three on this one, no problem. If you haven't checked out last week's video, make sure you go watch part one of the Missing Minifigures MCU edition. That'll be featured here or here at the end of this video, as well as the first two videos that featured Star Wars Missing Minifigures and Harry Potter as well. Please like and subscribe below if you enjoyed this content, guys. I would really appreciate it, and I will see you all next video.